In the period of entering the Pansa or the Rains Retreat, as monks we need to give importance to a sense of development and improvement in our practice. Such an enhancement will support us in attaining to spiritual qualities. Therefore, in the Pansa we need to undertake education and training Education and training means to undertake the practice. This involves the development of good conduct as a part of our physical actions. They need to be characterized by an attitude of sensitivity. Sensitivity goes hand in hand with mindfulness. Mindfulness is a real resource, not in the sense of a material resource, but in terms of what we call the wealth of goodness or the spiritual qualities of the Sangha. There is the wealth of Sila. It is probably known that Sila arises from nowhere else than the capacity to guard, maintain and control one's habits and manners physically and to keep them grounded in what we call a sense of shame. The sense of shame is one of the Dhammas that are the protectors of the world or the Hiriyotapa Dhamma, to be ashamed to do wrong and to shy away from heedless actions. We thus live with a sense of self-control, guarding the spiritual wealth of our sila. This means to maintain good standards in our actions by body and speech. Sila Samapati or Achara Samapati are the basis of the life of a Samana in which one always maintains a sense of abandoning sensual desires in one's conduct. The maintenance of good manners of a samana at the same time serves the development of our mindfulness practice. This entails upholding mindfulness in, in order to not have to feel embarrassed or inappropriate and one needs to watch oneself. And it is important to not assume too much ego in this but rather to see oneself in terms of what is still embarrassing about oneself and at the same time to try to correct one's actions. If one knows how to correct oneself, that's already a good thing. In this period of entering the Pansa, it is appropriate to revert to a sense of retreat and relaxation within one's monastic life, especially using certain techniques to arrive at a feeling of relief from sensual desires. We look at the part of life that is determined by our bodily khanda as something that isn't really desirable. It constantly displays the nature of change and instability, not being durable, and even more so it shows aspects that are unattractive, unbeautiful and repulsive. In technical terms this is called asupa, not being beautiful. In this regards the body is composed of unbeautiful components, unattractive and unpretty and it reveals repulsive and disgusting aspects. Simply that the body becomes dirty and even the cloth requisites that we cover it with start to develop an unattractive smell. So look at life with a sense of relief from passions, from an angle of not desiring things, seeing it in terms of factors of Dhamma and doing our duty to see the pluses and minuses in this, seeing the up and down developments we see life in such terms so it leads to the eradication of our feelings of self-importance 
and upadana, grasping, especially atavadupadana, clinging to notions of self, as the Buddha called it. We see the feelings of importance towards what they call the self in the light of nothing being substantial and stable. We see it within the common laws of the three characteristics. Whenever there is birth, naturally change and alterations follow and eventually things return to their original state. There is nothing that we can uphold as ours or possess. We see things from an angle that gives us a sense of separation. Regarding the physical aspect, this is called physical seclusion, kaya viveka. Seeing that the body is merely the body or merely dhamma, a part of nature. The body is part of nature. It is a natural process for material elements to gather together and form a physical body and keep performing their natural duties. We see these processes in the light of the three characteristics of impermanence and satisfactoriness and not-self. We contemplate them so we arrive at the experience of our passions fading away. We don't assume the body is ours. Seeing things this way helps us not to be obstructed by the power of worldly attitudes, the loka dhamma. You should understand the loka dhamma, the ways of the world that dominate us. They actually simply mean that happiness and suffering have power over us. Happiness and suffering are experiences on the path of someone with dust in his eyes, the path of a putujana householder. He feels he is carrying the world on his shoulders. Content and discontent, appreciation and depreciation and all these things. Don't let these things become obstructions. Contemplate them as merely dukkha arising and merely dukkha ceasing. One calls it happiness, but that's not what it is. One calls it suffering, but that's not what it is either. These are things that are obstructions. They are not real. We put them down and let go of them by generating a sense of equanimity, upeka dhamma. Upeka means to put oneself in a space of neither liking nor disliking things. In that space, one is not lacking anything. Lacking means a feeling of something not being complete or fully perfect. Cultivating mindfulness means to relate to things in a responsible way, doing our duties, our practice, or our obligation to see the realm of Dhamma, to see the nature of things. In the realms of nature, there are laws and duties of nature. Seeing them enables us to recognize the fruits of reality as it is naturally. We start feeling a sense of disinvolvement or seclusion. What are we secluded from? In the Buddha's terms, he speaks of seclusion as a factor of samadhi. We are secluded from likes and dislikes, satisfaction and dissatisfaction, or well secluded from sensual pleasures. One finds delight within the kilesas, kilesa gamma, and within the material world, vatu gamma. Both mean that we are appreciating this and finding satisfaction with it. So let us see our appreciation as part of the Dhamma, in this case, of Vedana, feelings. Feelings of pleasure and pain, joy and sorrow, but also upeka, feeling of neutrality. If we have mindfulness, we can see all this as merely experiences that aren't us. Simply feelings that don't belong to us. We don't engage with giving these feelings importance or hold on to them. Then they naturally abate and accordingly we develop seclusion from them. Developing a sense of seclusion in this way is like building up our system of immunity. With a sense of immunity we feel strong and sufficient in ourselves. Sometimes the Buddha refers to this as bitti, being suffused with rapture and joy. This feeling of being fully satisfied, the Buddha described as an experience of having enough, a feeling of fulfillment where nothing is lacking and nothing needs to be added, where everything is in its normal state. All this depends on us following the model of simply doing our duties according to the tasks of a Buddha, the one who knows and awakens to reality. The rains retreat period in one way is simply a season but in another way, it's a period to practice. Our practice should be akaliko, timeless. Time shouldn't be a factor. 
We practice whether it's day or night, in whichever posture we are, standing, walking, sitting or lying down. Whatever we do, we maintain sati and sampajanya, mindfulness and clear comprehension, and naturally do our duties, the duties of putting things down and abandoning them, putting down the conditions, sankhara, whether they are positive or negative, punyapi sankhara or apunyapi sankhara, we have to be aware of both. Then we can experience seclusion, being secluded from all unwholesome states of mind, all hot-tempered feelings. Greed feels hot, hatred feels hot. But when we know these feelings as they arise, they cannot take hold of us and we are able to have a refuge, a place to abide in, a vihara dhamma. We maintain equanimity, a clean and pure mental state. A pure state is a genuine, true state, not one of those false and illusionary ones. Our minds become cool and feel happy in a very normal way, based on a natural sense of mindfulness. Usually we experience obstacles and are easily diverted and prevented from this direct experience. There are what they call hindrances or maras working. Actually, these things aren't real obstructions. It's only because we aren't accustomed to them that they feel like it. We don't understand their nature and therefore see them as obstacles. But actually, they're normal. This is something to really understand. So actually, in this period isn't about much more than using each day in its specific form, where there are conventionally 24 hours a day in which the body does its duties accordingly. When there is light, the body is in the form of wakefulness. And when it gets night, the body and the nervous system relax. All this is normal. We use the time to exert full effort or patana, striving, in our practice. If there is no striving in the practice, this leads to feelings of inappropriateness. So we need to put forth effort with our lifestyle of contentment and fewness of wishes, practicing within the lineage of the noble enlightened beings. Each noble being leaves a track to follow, a track on the path of someone who is truly content and only depends on others with a genuine inner sense of sufficiency. So contemplate this. It's not beyond your capabilities, even in the situations where we need to relate to things around us and the worldly dhammas come into play. Sometimes our hopes are fulfilled, sometimes not. We understand this is something normal and shouldn't react with doubts and worries to this. It is really normal. There is the quality of being a samana that we all know, a peaceful one, who in terms of the body displays a sense of aloofness towards the body and in terms of the mental states exercises an attitude of coolness and peace along with what is happening. The mind then goes along the experiences with a sense of happiness. So regarding the pansa, we see this as a chance when our sankharas and our life energy is still supportive to maintain the ideals of the noble dhamma, the Arya dhamma, a teaching that will only lead us to prosperity and fulfillment, in which sila, samadhi, panya, and vimitti, liberation, are included, nothing less. We very well know sufficiently what sila means, understand enough about samadhi, and panya, right view, is also something that we can understand. And, liber and liberation is an experience that we can know too. All this is reasonable and has its own logic and measure in itself. Similar to when we cast away a heavy load and experience what it feels to be free from it. This we can understand, all of us. Therefore use the time of the pansa to cultivate your practice and training. Support it and don't let it go bad. Don't spoil the determination that you once gave as an evidence to the whole community. I'm sure you remember what you spoke up for in the midst of the Sangha gathering in your ordination ceremony. I understand that you have traveled all day and maybe you feel you'd like to return to your home monastery. I've given you a few little thoughts and would like to express my anumotana that you came to offer your respects today as we practice since olden times as an expression of our goodness. May I express my Anumotana again. <laughs>